Well, good morning. It's Tuesday morning, and today we're going to read from Matthew 21, 12 through 17. This is not the same scripture that I posted as the Holy Week reading, but this is a reading from Holy Week that we don't want to skip. So this is right after the Palm Sunday triumphal entry. Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. And they said to him, Do you hear what they are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read, quote, Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise, unquote. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. So Jesus cleanses the temple. That's one of the things that he does in this last week of his life. And it's one of the reasons that the priests and the Pharisees get so ex- upset with Jesus. You know, How dare you come into the temple and, and upset the order of things? Now, in ancient uh, Jewish life... You were required to go to the temple at least annually and make a sacrifice. And Passover was the time when most people came. So there's huge crowds from the countryside have come into Jerusalem, come to the temple, and they have to make a sacrifice. So they bring their animal. They bring a bird or a, a you know, a, a small animal. I wanted to say a rabbit, but they don't have rabbits. But whatever, they brought their small animal to be sacrificed as, as a, an appeasement to God for their sins. And it has to be an animal that is uh, without blemish. Where are they going to find an animal without blemish? <gasps> Not to worry, we'll sell you one. Just bring whatever you got. And they come in with their animal and it's not acceptable. But we've got one over here that is and they sell it to them. And I suspect that then the sellers take the animal that was deemed um, unacceptable, they take that animal and sell it to the next guy that comes along. Uh, that's you know a very cynical way of reading these things, but I suspect they did some of that. They also had money changers. Now, if you came into the temple with your coins from... Uh, you know, from Galilee, you shekels and Greek coins or whatever, you had to change them into temple money. And the exchange rate very much suited the folks doing the doing the exchange. So you couldn't get a good rate, but they made a nice profit and you got the right kind of coins and then you could pay the temple tax and the temple offerings and stuff. Uh, all of this supported the people who worked at the temple, supported the priests, supported these money changers and these animal sellers. And uh, it was quite the system. But it was a system that everybody was accustomed to. It was a system that everybody was used to. And it was a system that everybody could use. Now, we recently went to Ireland. Northern Ireland, of course, uses British pounds because they are part of the United Kingdom, Southern Ireland uses euros. And so we got some pounds and some euros to have in our pocket and um, avoided the exchange rate at the airport, which was nice. I remember at one point trying to buy a cup of coffee and you know I had to give the woman two or three euros. It was two or three dollars for this cup of coffee. And I just held out a handful of coins and I said, I don't understand your money. And she looked, she's this, this, and this, and took it away from me. So I think she took three euro coins. I don't know. But um, that's kind of how it was with the ancient world. You didn't really understand all this money. You just knew that you had to make these changes, and then you would, um, you'd be fine. So um, Jesus comes in and says, 
This is supposed to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of robbers. And that's all a quote from uh, one of the prophets. I think it's from Jeremiah, but don't hold me to that. Um, and so he turns over the tables and, you know, he doesn't actually make a whip and beat anybody, as the, the um, Facebook memes like to show. But he may have, uh, he may have actually driven some some sheep and cows out of there. Um, who knows? Um, I know of pastors who've taken this whole thing to heart and won't let anybody sell anything in the church. And of course, there's a lot of times when the church has got fundraisers going on, um, um, different things are for sale, tickets and things. And um, so you have to figure out a way to to say this is optional. It's not You don't have to buy something, but if you want to, here it is. And um, don't make people feel like they're coming into a, uh, you know, a, a mall when they walk into to the church narthex. I think that's important. Um, so what Jesus does is, is sort of purify the temple. Uh, now, how long did that last? I bet 15 minutes because I imagine the money changers put the tables right back up and collected the coins and were back in business in half an hour. And the animal salesman probably caught the animals that were wandering around. And, you know, in, in a few minutes, they were back in business and everything was status quo. And um, and this crazy Jesus had been, well, he'd left and, you know, they were going to get him someday soon. And they will. They'll arrest him. But uh, for today, that's what he did. And what we need to do is be sure that we don't let... Um, the church become a marketplace. Now, a lot of churches have bookstores. That's fine, I guess. Coffee shops, uh, you know, why sell it? But um, have these different things set up in an effort to draw people in. And uh, yeah, okay, I kind of get that. But we need to set the church itself aside as a place where you come to worship and not to get stuff and buy stuff and, and do your business. Uh, it's always a struggle, but that's something important. So think about that today. Pray about that, and we will um, we will see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.